Uh, okay, hi everyone. Um, should continue in, Russia, in English, right? Okay. Um, uh, my name is Nikita. Should I speak louder? Okay. Um, I hope everyone can hear me well. My name is Nikita Alexiev. I am now a senior researcher and assistant professor at Itmo University. And I'm doing actually computational biology. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about random graphs and uh, which models are there and um, uh, which applications do they have, uh, in particular in computational biology, because this is my area of expertise. Uh, and I will start with really um, basic examples and basic things. And uh, please like hurry me if everyone knows what's, what's that. I'm not sure if everyone can see the sli uh, slides well. Uh, could you share? Could you share the presentation with ours with some other type of, like through Telegram or through something? Um, yeah, I can. But I guess uh, you can see it on the panels and in your screens before you. Because I can see it well from here. On okay, but if, if yeah, yeah, I can see on this screen. I know what's in there, by the way. But okay, so. <laughs> okay, so everyone who wants uh, can see. It. Perfect. Uh, it's just the location is not not very cool. Okay, yeah. I, I probably will need it. Thanks. So um, I will start with the most famous and basic and uh, well-known example of random graph models, which is a uh, Erdős-Nyi graph. Please uh, raise your hand if you're familiar with it, deeply or not deeply or somehow. Okay, uh, not over, not everyone, even even not deeply. Um, uh, actually, there are two things which are called uh, Erdős-Nyi random graph, but uh, the most basic thing is the following: you have a graph on n vertices, and uh, you connect edges, in uh, you connect uh, vertices with edges independently with probability p. Uh, so for any pair of edges, you decide if they're connected or not, if they're linked or not, uh, with probability p. You flip a coin and then draw an, or not draw an edge. Uh, or if in our terms, uh, the graph is equal to, uh, this graph is equal to some particular graph on n, on n vertices with such a probability. There, and capital is uh, n choose two, the total possible number of edges. Okay, and uh, E of G is um, the number of edges in the graph G. Uh, so this this is called uh, usually called uh, binomial Erdős-Nyi model because uh, well, you may guess why, because we have this binomial case we either have an edge or not, and uh, the number of edges follows binomial distribution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the more or less the same thing can be defined as follows. You have a graph with n vertices and k edges, and k is fixed, non-random. And all such graphs has the same probability. Okay? Um, these two things are related to, like, uh, this is also called usually uniform model, uniform Erdős-Nyi model. So you basically choose uh, a graph at, at random from all possible graphs with n vertices and k edges. So these two are the most intuitional, intu intu most natural uh, random graphs you could imagine. Um, why, uh, while the first binomial model is kind of easier to interpret it, stuff like that. Um, I would, I would mostly concentrate on the second one. I, I would switch between these two. Uh, why the second one is interesting is because you can consider it as not as a single graph, but as a um, process like this. Uh, you have a, an empty graph on uh, n edge on n vertices and zero edges, and then you uh, add edges at each uh, point of time, at each step of time, you add an edge like this, and this, and that. 
and uh, and then you have a you have a graph. Uh, this is a toy example. Usually we are talking about huge graphs uh, with uh, thousands or billions of uh, nodes and uh, the number of edges of the same. Order, but you have you have seen a graph, uh, an example of, of a good random graph uh, during the last talk. It wasn't Erdogan Yi, and I will I will maybe explain why uh, Erdogan Yi is not uh, always applicable. Uh, but here it's a toy example, and you can you, you could consider it not as a single graph, but as a sequence of graphs which evolve in time. Uh, the step of time is adding an edge. Is everything fine? Okay, um, so what type of questions are people interested about in, uh, in random graphs? In particular, in Erdős Rényi graph, um, there are three regimes here. We, we can, we can uh, define three regimes here. So in the beginning of a process, uh, and here I'm talking about binomial model, but it may be easier to think about uh, uniform model here. If there are not many edges, uh, in, in the graph. So if the probability of having an edge is uh, C over N where C is less than one, uh, then uh, the graph is a collection of small connected components. Small means that every connected component is a uh, logarithmic uh, of N. So it's a uh, way, uh, so each connected components, uh, each connected component is really small compared to the whole graph. Um, if uh, C is larger than one, if probability is C over N and C is larger than one, then uh, it appears a giant component, a component uh, which uh, has a significant part of nodes. So it's, it's gamma and here gamma and beta and gamma, there are some constants that depend on C, they depend on C and, um, but the thing is before some critical point the connected components are small, and after some critical point, uh, the connected component there is a, there is one huge component, giant component. It's it's only one because if there are two giant components, uh, they would uh, connect at some step with high probability, right? So uh, uh, your graph after after this uh, critical critical probability, your graph is uh, you can you can think about it as about a giant component of uh, size comparable to n and uh, a soup of small small components of, of logarithmic size and uh, but uh, right after the critical com uh, critical probability it's not connected yet there is a giant component but it's not connected yet and there is another so there is, there is first phase transition the giant component appears and there is a second phase transition the graph become connected and uh, it's happen then the probability of uh, having an edge is uh, log n over n. So if it's larger than log, uh, log n over n, uh, the graph is connected. If it's smaller than graph is not connected. And uh, by the way, the model is so well, um, well known uh, and um, well studied that uh, you may also find in the literature, like how it ex what, what is the exactly behavior if C equals one. So how exactly this component uh, forms or how, how exactly the giant component forms or how exactly graph uh, is becoming uh, connected. So this is the type of questions people are interested in. Um, in other, uh, and this all are results of Erdogan in E from uh, late, 90, uh, late uh, sorry, 50s. Uh, other types of questions people are interested about are interested about uh, chromatic numbers of um, a random graph. So, like, in how, how many colors do you need in order to color the random graph in a regular way? Uh, but we are not going to talk about it this at all uh, today. Is a question? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, two small questions. First, uh, are these uh, statements about the second kind of uh, uh, Erdős-Rényi graphs from the previous slide. Uh, this is about the first one, the first, for probability. The first one, okay. and it, it can be translated to the case that the number of edges is given. You just uh, so mm -hmm. on this slide, you may think that k and p are connected with a natural formula like k equals p times n choose two. No, oh, okay, yeah, it's clear that it's the first one because it only had 
the P. Uh, yeah, okay. And uh, uh, gamma is, um, uh, maybe I missed it. It's, it's some constant which depends on C. Mm -hmm. It definitely should depend on C because if C is large, then gamma is large, right? So it's, uh, and uh, it's interesting how exactly it depends on C, but we're not going to, to discuss it. So the, so the giant components. This, but but you just don't want, to, don't want to talk about this. So so if this known or. Uh, it, is, it is known, it is known, yeah, yeah it is known. And uh, yeah, thank, thanks for the question. And, and once again, if you prefer the um, uniform model, the, the number of edges is fixed. You may think that critical points there uh, giant component uh, appeared is it's a time the number of edges is half of number of nodes. Basically, it means that the average degree is one, right? Makes sense. Um, okay, let us continue. Uh, there is a question I personally uh, is interested in. And uh, it also was, uh, while I personally was interested in, in 2015, Erdogan Renier already answered it in 1959. Um, and it's the question is about the number of trees. And I also, I, I ask you to, to give you, uh, I, I, I believe you may be interested in this question as well, because I believe parts of it is not known. So what is known? Um, uh, consider, for, for a while, a uh, subcritical regime, the graph is a soup of small components. Um, it's natural to think that all these components are trees. Uh, formally speaking, uh, the number of components which, which, are, which have in cycles are asymptotically, uh, there are almost, almost all vertices belongs to trees, okay? Uh, in subcritical regime. So which trees are they? Uh, what's, what's the size of trees? Size is a, is a bad word, by the way, because size is the number of edges. And, and it's, for me, it's more natural to say it's number of nodes. Uh, TM is the number of uh, trees on M vertices in this graph. So a number of connected components, which are trees with M vertices. M is fixed. And um, N is goes to infinity. And K is goes to infinity. and uh, uh, 2k over n is uh, finite and non-zero. Okay, so the number of edges and the number of nodes uh, both goes to infinity with, uh, with the same rate, asymptotically same rate. Uh, then uh, the number of trees fall in this nice formula. Um, that's that's a theory from addition in year. Uh, if you are interested in discrete mathematics, in discrete mathematics, uh, you may pay attention to this m to the power of m minus two factor. This is a number of. Uh, wait, wait. Does anyone know? Uh, does it uh, link to any of you? No. Vertices. Yeah, it's a number of label trees in on, on M vertices in a complete, completely connected graph, complete graph. Yeah, uh, this is exactly this, this thing. And uh, this theorem is not uh, hard to prove. Uh, it's uh, more or less this fact about, it's called Scaly theorem uh, about the number of label trees in a, in a, in a connected, in a complete graph. It's not Poisson distribution, no. Uh, thanks for this question as well. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about it. It's, it has X in, um, in exponent, right? It, but it does sum up to one. For X, uh, for, so it's called Borel distribution. But it's, it's a name and that's like Borel distribution. Not all Borel distribution means it's measurable. It's, it's a name, it's Borel distribution. It's a, for each X, less than, I believe one. Yeah, for each X less than one, which correspond to our critical, critical phase. For each X less than one, this is a um, probability mass function, which means that if you summarize it from, uh, from M equals one to M equals infinity, it, will, it would give you one, okay? If M is, uh, if X, sorry, if X is larger than one, 
then it's not the case anymore. It's summarized to something less than one. And this exactly uh, correspond to the fact that it's a, it's, it's a, if it's a supercritical regime, right? Before, uh, in subcritical regime, all the, so what's, what's written here, it's a, uh, if, if you multiply the left part by M, you should multiply it by M in order to, to, to what I'm saying now makes sense. If you multiply it by M, uh, M times TM is the number of nodes in M trees, right? So uh, M times TM over N, it's a number of, it's a proportion of nodes in uh, M trees. And uh, what it's saying is, uh, if X is smaller than one, then uh, almost all vertices are in trees, right? And after after M uh, after X, uh, if X is larger than one, that is not the case anymore. But the formula still uh, makes uh, still holds. Okay. So um, what's interesting? What is interesting about it? Yeah. So there was like uh, some something about the limiting behavior. But uh, uh, like if we have uh, a single Erdos-Lenyi graph uh, of this second type, uh, do we know like the distribution of uh, how often? Yeah, thanks, thanks. It's exactly what I'm going to, to, to tell on this slide. Okay. So uh, yeah, it means that my, my talk makes sense for you. Um, so uh, we have this collection. And it was uh, both limiting behavior and uh, it was in average, right? There is this E for expectation here. Uh, and it's actually the only thing I'm interested in my applications, which I, yeah, which I will have time to talk about. But uh, you might also ask how it's distributed. Well, this is also the limiting case, uh, but in the limiting, in the limit case for large N, this t1, t2, et cetera, forms a vector or sequence, uh, and it's Gaussian. It's Gaussian, uh, the expectations were given on the previous slide, and the covariant matrix is known. And this is the results from early 80s, so like 40 years ago. Um, so what I do not know, and I was trying to find it. So I believe these are open problems. If you find it in the literature, please let me know. If you are interested in this or, and you are like PhD student or student who need a diploma topic, uh, please contact me. I would be happy to discuss that. I will try to attack this problem, but not like uh, I didn't spend much time on that. So uh, which, uh, which problems I believe are um, open uh, once again, this uh, if X is fixed, this vector T1, T2, et cetera, it's, it's a known Gaussian vector. It's proved that it's Gaussian. But um, what I do not know, it's how it changed during, uh, during the time. Ta by time, I mean X, which is uh, number of edges over twice number of edges over the number of nodes. So how this uh, process uh, evolved. I do know how uh, how the expectations behave, right? But I do not know how uh, what's the covariance function. Uh, if I if I have two uh, two moments in time, they have I don't know like a thousand uh, nodes and a hundred of edges and uh, two hundreds of edges, and it's so the same process how they correlate between each other. Uh, and another thing uh, which I uh, which I know the answer, but I didn't prove it. Uh, uh, if, uh, if we consider the second model, the number of uh, edges is fixed. I believe uh, even uh, variance uh, of TM is not known and uh, covariance between TM, TL is not known. So, uh, and also this, this same question about uh, the process. So I believe they, they are Gaussian as well. Uh, the behavior is different from uh, the one from Barbour's theorem. And, um, yeah, and it's uh, maybe not known. Did it, did it answer your question somehow? Yeah, it's, I believe it's more or less binomial thing. So in, in, in uh, for fixed N, it's, I believe it's binomial distribution. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure.
Yeah, that's uh, well, that's not like they're not completely independent, but uh, the, 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 it's almost independent. But there is there is a covariance between like the number. Oh, the number of trees are not independent. But uh, if you if you consider a particular set of nodes and you ask like how it iterates with uh, another set of nodes, they you may consider them almost independent. That's 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 fair. yeah maybe but uh, i'm not sure about like like even like even even having a covariance uh matrix for this uh, g tilde case uh it requires a lot of computation so you may say well i believe it's gaussian i could bet it's gaussian but uh, uh com calculating the the variance and covariances are kind of well it's either annoying or it needs a smart idea I'm trying to advertise a diploma physics here, uh, but uh, I believe it needs a smart idea because if you're if you're trying to do it straightforward, uh, well, I, I tried to do it straightforward and I didn't succeed, but I didn't spend much time on it. So maybe it's it's doable, but maybe it, it requires some some smart idea. Uh, Barbour Barbour's papers, uh, by the way, have has some smart ideas in there. Um, okay. So I advertise, uh, I advertise the part which may be uh, related to Gaussian processes. Well, it's definitely related to Gaussian processes, but I don't know which one exactly. Um, uh, let me, let me uh, continue with our models. Uh, there are other models. Uh, for, so what's, uh, why, why this uh, Erdogan-E graph? Uh, it's, it's a kind of poor model. It's, uh, it's too, uh, too uniform. For example, if you consider co-authorship graph, uh, then you may assume that uh, like co-authorship graph, uh, graph is a, uh, each node is a scientist and there is an edge between two nodes if they have a paper in common and they have a joint paper, uh, you may think that there are more productive offers and less productive offers and it's more natural that the two productive offers have a, have a paper together. Uh, let us uh, consider like like one field. It's 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 also natural to say that two biologists would more probably have a paper in common than biologists and I don't know geologists. But uh, if we're talking about the same area, uh, this would be uh, this could be the case. Um, to address this idea, there is so-called beta model. I do not have references here, but you you may if you need it, you you will find it. It's it's from. There is a name for that. There, is a, there, are, there are other names for that, but beta model is uh, probably the most common one. So uh, the probability each uh, node has its own uh, uh, activity beta. And uh, the probability that two uh, nodes are linked, uh, it's a product of, uh, of these activities over some, uh, some factor which uh, Sorry for the parenthesis. I, I hope it's still readable. Uh, yeah. So uh, the probability that two, two nodes are linked, uh, proportion, proportion, kind of proportional to uh, the activities betas over some denominator, which, uh, which I do not uh, respect much, as you can see. Uh, and uh, why do we need it? Uh, we need the denominator in order to have this nice formula uh, for the whole graph, right? Because uh, if, if you just have a product, you would have some uh, some uh, annoying factors in, in the whole graph um, probability. And um, I will talk about this model, uh, about the application of this model, but uh, it's in a bit different flavor. Um, I could not I could not do my this. Um, I need to make this um, evolution evolution uh, analogous for this graph as well. And I'm doing it in the following way. I basically, I'm just uh, forgetting about the denominator. And what I'm saying is, so again, once again, I want not a single graph, but I want a sequence of graphs where I just add uh, edges independently. And uh, in order to do that, I start with graph with no edges. Uh, on each step, I choose, uh, 
a vertex with a probability pi. I choose now a vertex j with probability pj and, uh, and form an edge. And uh, the total sum of uh, pi is one. So it's I on like on each step I, I choose two vertices. This kind of uh, allow kind of allows uh, loops and multiple edges and stuff like that. Well, okay, uh, we could live with it. Uh, it doesn't change the model uh, dramatically. So this is analogous. Uh, this is a better model analogous of the uniform model okay uh, and this is good uh, this is a good model because it has some um, it takes into account the fact that different vertices have different activities which is the case in 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 uh, a lot of applications uh, and in in the applications i will i'm going to talk about uh, it's um, kind of important yeah so is this uh, hard to work with the, the same thing where you exclude the possibility of loops and uh, multiple edges? I don't think, I, I think it's more or less the same. It just, it just require a bit more like, mm -hmm. okay. uh, you just need to pay a bit more attention. That's, 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 that's it. It's, it works, it works perfectly for uh, simple graphs as well. Um, okay. So, uh, and um, how this PI uh, I chosen chosen uh, in, in the, so for, for the theorem, I'm going to show you on the next slide, I hope. Um, um, we can see the PI, uh, I distribute it according to this Dirichlet, Dirichlet distribution, which is a uniform distribution on a simplex. I'm going to show it what's, what's that. Um, so I, my my graph has two levels of randomness. First, I have a graph on n vertices. Then, and I assigned to each vertex pi randomly from this Dirichlet distribution, which I'm going to to define on the next slide. Or uniform, if you are happy with uniform distribution on the simplex, it is a uniform distribution on the simplex. And then I uh, do my random graph uh, according to this pi to this weights pi. Okay. Um, What's what's Dirichlet distribution? It's a, a uniform distribution on a simplex. So for low dimensional cases, you may see that, and uh, it's a very natural thing. Even so, it's it's. I would I would tell you if I would have time, I would tell you why it's natural for the biological application. Uh, but uh, you have weights which are positive and they sum up to one. What's the natural distribution on this set well it's uniform distribution on the set fair enough i believe uh so for this dirichlet distribution for this uh better dirichlet graph uh we have a fallen theorem with phd student of my alexei zabelkin which is pretty old uh, still not properly published um we are working on it well it's kind of published so uh but not properly i will show you the version which is published uh once again we counted uh we counted trees we counted trees um this is this is how they are distributed uh once again this formula kind of shows you uh where the phase transition is all the questions about phase transition are open for this model but what we know for sure that uh this uh, the right hand side part, right hand side uh, formula uh, gives you distribution as far as x is less than one half. So if x is less than one half, uh, there is no giant component in your in your Dirichlet graph. Uh, if x is larger than one half, there is a giant component. Uh, yeah. That's what uh, this is what your this formula gives you, uh, and uh, except it's it looks nice. Um, if you do not know when the graph became connected, but uh, it's natural to assume it's become connected way later than in Erdogan case because uh, with this um, in this Dirichlet case, uh, the smallest uh, there is a vertex which is. Uh, the most uh, how to say it introvert uh, guy in your graph 
uh, and uh, its probability to uh, make a contact is of order one over n square. So it's natural to assume it wouldn't it wouldn't connect to the giant component uh, until uh, the number of edges is of order n square. But uh, the giant component be became earlier than an Erdős-Unyi graph. So graph become connected later, but uh, giant component uh, appears earlier. Uh, once again, if you are a discrete math fan. You may like this uh, three m minus three factorial over m minus one factorial over two m minus one factorial. Uh, does everyone know what this is? I, I believe not because it's way way more uh, exotic. This number are called uh, Fuscatala numbers. Uh, once again, this this sequence uh, defined the probability probability mass function as uh, soon as x is smaller than one half. And uh, this Fuss Catalan numbers, uh, uh, I believe a lot of you knows what Catalan numbers are, right? Yeah, uh, this Fuss Catalan numbers, they are, um, um, number, they are the numbers, uh, they are enumerated. Um, similar types of objects. Uh, for example, they enumerated paths, uh, which has steps up. They have, uh, they can go up by one and down by two and uh, became above the x axis or and have a particular number of steps right you you're familiar with uh, catalan numbers similar catalan numbers interpretation if you are not just read about it because i have less than 15 minutes um, another thing it's enumerated this should be clear uh, this enumerated uh, quadrangulation of 2m plus 2 gone so catalan numbers enumerated uh, triangulations of uh, n plus two gon and this enumerated two m uh, quadrangulations of two m plus two gons, um, and they enumerated also m r e trees uh, in the same fashion as Catalan numbers enumerate binary trees and a lot of other stuff. And I particular a big fan of this object. My uh, Diploma thesis was about random matrices, and this Fuscatala numbers appeared there in in a completely different uh, context, and they are moments of some distributions as well. I don't have time for, to, to talk about it at all, but if you are wondering, I can give you. It's, it was like a spy movie because, like, it was ten years after I defended my diploma thesis, and this Fuscatala numbers appeared again. Um, so they're kind of um, following me. Um, but uh, they're nice guys, so I'm, I'm not afraid of them. Uh, and there are a lot of nice uh, combinatorial, combinatorial interpretations. Um, nice story, I believe. Uh, so that's why I was sharing you this theorem be proved. Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, you can infer where the phase transition happens from this formula. The, I mean, where the when the giant component yeah. uh, appears. How can I see that? Can you, you, you cannot see it directly. The thing is, if you summarize this guy from oh, wow. m from one to infinity, which, uh -huh. which gives you the part of vertices which belongs to trees, uh -huh. uh, this gives you one if x is less than one half. And it wouldn't give you one if it's larger than one half, which means that it appears a giant component. And to get that, you need to know the properties of these number, special numbers, yes, and those yeah. Numbers. But this well, this um, thing summarizes by definition summarizes into hypergeometric function with some parameters, and this hypergeometric function I will show it later if I would have time. This hypergeometric function is equal to x if x is less than half, and uh, something crazy if x is uh, larger than one half, okay? Yeah, sure. Yep. 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 I think so, yeah. I believe there are the number of components which are, has small number of nodes and have cycles 
are distinguishing. So the amount of, uh, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for my, for, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. For the reasons I would probably have time to talk about, I, I will, I, I, I like to call them trees, but uh, yeah, you may consider them as just uh, com connected components of uh, order M. It's important to distinguish order and size in graph theory. Order is a number of nodes. Uh, okay. Order is a number of nodes and size is a number of uh, edges. And it's, it's, I mean, it's important because if you are using some Python and you ask about size of your graph, you may be surprised and you may spend like several hours in order in, uh, trying to understand what's going on. Uh, there, there is no assumption like this in here. In here, we, we, we should not assume that. No, uh, there are no equal sign between, well, uh, for small components, yes, even in supercritical regime, yeah. Okay, um, I do not know, know nothing about their uh, mutual distribution, uh, like covariance matrices, are they Gaussian? I don't know actually anything about distribution, I just know the average. I could bet it's Gaussian again, I have no idea what's the variance. I could I have no idea what's covariance. If you like this type of questions, please con and you're a student or PhD student, or you have students or PhD students, please contact me. Uh, okay, applications. Applications of random graphs. Um, the paper of Erdogan was written in 1959. And until late 90s, there was it wasn't a big deal. Now it's the uh, most uh, cited paper of Erdős, which is a big deal because Erdős has, uh, has, you know, papers and um, they are well known. And it's the, the, the most uh, cited uh, Erdős paper. Uh, this slide is by the way old, it's uh, one and a half years old. And now it's about 18,000 citations. So um, uh, the interest to random graphs is growing. Uh, it's going from social networks, social networks uh, like Facebook and stuff, um, economics and blah, blah, blah. For social networks, uh, all this assumption, uh, both beta model and the uh, model is not good enough. You need to consider scale-free, so-called scale-free random graphs, the powers of, oh, sorry, the degree of each vertex, the degrees of vertices are distributed with some polynomial law. Here it's, it would be binomial law and uh, it should be polyno it's polynomial for Facebook. Uh, but still it's a random graph uh, with some other properties. Uh, if you know the small word hypothesis that any two people, there is a chain between any two people with, within six uh, handshaking. Uh, handshaking are not allowed anymore in 2021, but uh, some, like some kind of social interaction like a zoom calls uh more than analogous of, of handshaking uh, this is uh, something from red how fast tweets are going uh around the world uh was also like uh, based on random graphs um random graphs uh applications in epidemiology it's it's uh, similar to to social networks because we uh, spread viruses uh, based on our social context by the way, uh, this part about uh, phase transition, it's, ex it's extremely important, and important for epidemiology. Uh, if it was, if the epidemiology, so what's epidemiology graph? The vertices are people and there is an edge if one spread a virus to, to another. Um, what this uh, phase transition tells us, uh, it tells us that, um, it tells us that if the probability is a bit smaller than some some something, then uh, the graph is still kind of not connected. So probably your virus is still in some small component. But if it's larger than some some critical probability, then the whole society is having the virus now. So if anyone tells you, well, but it makes no sense to close bars after. 11 p.m. So it's, it doesn't make sense because virus do not know if it's 11 p.m. or not. Uh, so it's, it's a stupid measure. It's not stupid. Probably it's just 
is just make the probability of spreading a bit smaller and make the whole graph very different from uh, from a supercritical regime. And I believe I have less than five five minutes now, uh, and I'm going to talk about genome rearrangements, which is actually my area of expertise. Uh, I would probably just briefly advertise, briefly advertise what's going on here. Uh, so I will I will be very quick. Uh, genome rearrangements. Uh, there are chromosomes in our cells, and sometimes uh, they uh, there are there are events in there which cause the genome rearrangements. You may know about mutation, then some letter ACGT uh, is um, a change to another one. Uh, this is a different thing. This is a thing then a part of chromosome just rotate or two chromosomes uh, uh, exchange their parts. And people are interested in questions like, well, uh, we have uh, human X chromosome, mouse X chromosome and red X chromosome. They have uh, huge parts which are common between genomes. So if you consider X chromosome of human, it's a just a part and you, you uh, cut in some there and make a puzzle from that. From that puzzle, you basically may uh, assemble mouse X chromosome. Biologists would kill me for this uh, analogy because it's very rough, but very roughly speaking, it's true. Uh, so uh, our chromosomes is kind of mosaic, uh, mosaic reordering of um, uh, between different species is just mosaic reordering. And the uh, questions people are interested in, they're like, well, how many of uh, these rearrangements happen between human and mouse. Okay, makes sense. And how random graphs can uh, can help here. Um, let me skip this. Well, we, uh, they form a, a so-called breakpoint graph uh, based on this. Uh, so I have two genomes. I built this breakpoint graph, which I don't have time to explain what it is, but we do it. Uh, and it's a uh, it's graph. It's built on two uh, based on two genomes, and it can it consists of uh, cycles. And uh, well, what's the theorem? Theorem is and that like how it's changed during this um, genome rearrangements. It's uh, in this graph just couple of edges removed and couple of new edges added uh, in order to make the matching of the same set of vertices. So. There is a simple answer to the question of what is the distance between two genomes, uh, which is in the end of this slide. The distance between minimal distance between two genomes uh, is equal to the number of, of these common pieces, which is B, minus the number of cycles uh, in uh, in the breakpoint graph, which is similar to like how many transpositions you need in order to um, make from a given uh, permutation. And an, an identical one. You count the number of cycles in transposition uh, and uh, the number of steps you need, the number of swaps you need is equal to n minus number of cycles. This is a very similar situation, but, but cycles are different. And, uh, but everything, everything else is more or less the same. But, and I have one minute, I will give you a question and I will give you an answer. Um, there is a question. This is a minimal distance. But there is also the actual distance. The actual distance, like how many genome rearrangements actually happened during the evolution. And um, based on our simulation, and uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give you details how we made these simulations, if you, if you have a genome and start to perform uh, genome rearrangements randomly, and we did K genome rearrangements, we would see that in the beginning, in the beginning, this to uh, the minimal distance and the actual distance are the same. But after some point, actually this point X equals one half, and it's exactly one half from our theorem, uh, these two distances, the minimal distance is underestimate the actual distance. You, you can see that from the slide, right? And um, yeah, this is, and this is based on this random uh, Dirichlet random graphs. Let me skip this and this. Uh, this is this is analogous of our theorem uh, in this genome rearrangement case. So uh, we counted number of cycles in the this breakpoint graph, and there is a bijection, al almost bijection between cycles in that graph and trees in Dirichlet graph. 
and um, so we use both uh, Erdoshini model, the first one, and uh, Dirichlet model, uh, the second one, and it allows us to predict to predict the actual uh, the actual distance. If, we, if you give him one one extra minute, I will send you nice two nice slides, and this will be it. Okay. Um, this is, uh, by the way, this ugly hypergeometric function, which equals to x as far as x less than one half. Uh, if you're interested in this about it, uh, contact me. I will, I will, I will discuss this. We tried to nice two nice slides to finish. Um, we um, implement our our approach on uh, real data. We have a tree of mammal genomes. You see, there is there is nice orangutan here, nice rhino, horse, cow all these nice uh, mammal genomes. Uh, some other people in 2017, they reconstruct their block structure. This, this mosaic I was, I was talking about uh, when we talk about mouse, rat, and human. So they, they did it for all these species. And uh, this allow us to tell if minimal distance is good enough because uh, if you have minimal distances, it's the matrix between, like for any pair of species, we have a distance between two species and we could estimate it as minimal one or the Favel method. And we can see how, um, how well it's fitted on a tree because if, if you have a matrix on distances, there is a famous problem how to, and you have a tree, you may uh, find the, the best fit in like the, the best length of edges, right? In order to fit these distances. So we did it for this tree and for this species, we estimate both minimal distance and uh, our distance. And uh, for minimal distance, you may see that it's underestimate, uh, like if we, if we have minimal distances and then we estimate it through the tree, uh, we see that it's underestimates, uh, minimal distances underestimate the real distance. And in our case, uh, the, the mean error is equal to zero. So it's, it's distributed it around this line. Uh, it still can be discussed like if this, uh, um, if, if it's fitting is good enough, but uh, there is no systematic error in, in, in this estimation anymore and um, yeah since uh, we have no time to to prove I have a nice proof if you are interested you may you may also contact me after after the talk and uh, thank you for your attention and any questions are welcome if you have like a one minute or yeah something probably probably not probably from anyone uh, uh, except you if if no one else well please Um, so, as I understood, uh, you first explained what are Erdos and Ernie graphs, yeah. then explained some more expressive model, which is the better model, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, some Dirichlet uh, probabilities. Yeah. Okay. And then there was the second part about uh, computing some distances between genomes. Yeah. And yeah, in the middle, there was the theorem that you proved about uh, the limiting, limiting behavior of components uh, in a graph. So what's the connection between this theorem and distances uh, between genomes? In order to know the distances between genomes, we need to count uh, cycles in breakpoint graph. OK? And cycles, well, there was a breakpoint graph, which I, uh, which I, so breakpoint graph is based on two genomes. We, we uh, draw a graph and it's, it's a collection of cycles and the distance is uh, defined through the cycles in this graph, okay? And this is a, a random graph or? And random? if this graph is evolution, is evolutionary graph. So if we start, if we have a genome, and start evolution by making random genome rearrangements. Mm -hmm. This graph became random, and the cycles in this graph correspond directly to the trees in G Dirichlet graph. Mm -hmm. That's that's how these two parts are related. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. I I mean I barely had time for that, but uh, the idea is in bioinformatics there is a graph which is related to Dirichlet graph. 
And uh, by knowing the number of three in Dirichlet graph, we know uh, the dynamic of, of this bioinformatics graph. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. While, while Katya left, maybe we have time for one more question. Okay. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's talk after after the, after the, the, the talk. Thanks so much for for listening.